Well, so, you know, sounds like ah, uh, um, and er. And I will note which speaker repeats a word or phrase, such as I, I, this means, this means. That's known as a double clutch. At the end of the meeting, I will report the number of times that each speaker used these expressions. <laughs> Our next function our role is uh, going to be Bobby Durrett, our grammarian. Well, as your grammarian, my role is really twofold. One is to introduce a word of the day and encourage everyone when they speak to work it in somehow to what they're saying. And the second thing is to listen for people's use of the English language both, you know, good and maybe not as good. So for the word of the day, today is procrastinate. And it means to put off intentionally and habitually. So in a sentence, don't procrastinate on choosing a role for Toastmasters <laughs> or else you'll get 20 emails in everybody's inbox. <laughs> so and for what I'm looking for, I'm looking for good uses creative words, good vocabulary, interesting expressions, and then maybe things where the grammar isn't perfect or a sentence just kind of runs on. That's tough to do, but at the end, I'll give a report on both. Thanks. And our next functionary role is going to be Keith, is it Napier? Napier. Yes. Napier, Keith oh. Napier. Today I am your timer. My job is to time speeches, evaluations, and table topics. The purpose of, for timing is to help participants learn how to express a thought and or speech within a specific time. I will use the three colored uh, lights to signal time. Green, you have met the minimum time requirements. Yellow, you have met, you are at the halfway point between minimum and maximum. And red, you have reached the maximum time needed to conclude. I will record time for each person and I will very briefly report the times for each speaker when called upon. And our last functionary role is going to be Stephanie Siegel, our general evaluator today. Good afternoon. I am your general evaluator today, so my role for this afternoon would be to Evaluate the general flow of the overall meeting. I will be evaluating the evaluator, we only have one today, and I'll also be evaluating our table topics as well. And then at the very end, I will give a summary on maybe things we can improve upon, things that we did well, things to look forward to. So, good job signing up. We look forward to a very great meeting. Functionary roles have been introduced. I would like to first, I forgot to do the mission, so let's do that. Let's all read the mission statement. To provide a mutually supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self confidence and personal growth. Love that. I'd also like to introduce our guest today. We have Nathan Carpenter. So thank you for joining us today. We also have Shane in the back. Thank you also for joining us today. Please enjoy our, our meeting today. Thank you. And then our first, our only speaker today is Heather. And we are going to have Jeremy, her evaluator, introduce her today and give us a little bit about what to expect. Jeremy? Toastmasters, our speaker for today has a condition which is just one of the topics that she may be, may be talking about. After reading about the traits and behaviors of her condition, um, I truly believe that she's gonna be wondering at del delivering speeches. Individuals who have this condition have ingenious compensatory skills, test well orally, are often great at storytelling, and use their long-term memory when learning through hands-on experiences. I believe she will excel in this group over time. These, those are some of the positive traits. 
I will be looking forward to hearing about her love of comics and TMNT, not to be confused with TNT. <laughs> I will also be looking at the structure for her speech. Her speech will need to possess a clear opening, body, and conclusion. I welcome Heather McEnroe up to deliver her icebreaker speech, which will last five to seven minutes. And in the footsteps of our own splinters, I just have a feeling that she will do a bang up job. The title of her speech is Don't Laugh, But Superman is Allergic to a Rock. <laughs> Good afternoon, Postmasters. And yes, I'm a huge comic book fan. I'm a huge comic book nerd. I love video games, movies, all that stuff. If it's at a comic book convention, chances are I, be, I either love it, have heard of it, or want to learn more about it. And a lot of people look at me and they're just like, you're 25 years old. Shouldn't you be acting your age? Well, this is the oldest I've ever been, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, I do understand the social norms of what I should be doing, what my responsibilities are as a 25-year-old and who lives out on her own and has her own little dog and everything like that. I know what I should be doing in life to succeed in my goals. However, I have not forgotten what has made me happy since I was five. And that was grape juice, cheese sticks, and Ninja Turtles. <laughs> At 25, I still enjoy grape juice, but I prefer wine, a good cheese platter, and my favorite is Donatello. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's something, comic books have always been something that have been a positive thing in my life. I have dyslexia. You will never see me up here with a piece of paper because I will fumble so hard. But in order to get me into reading, my mom started getting me into comics. A lot of the comics were based off the cartoons I watched. And thanks to her in doing that, not only am I a huge nerd that stands in front of you today, but I also have a massive collection that could rival that library that you see in Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> I love reading now. Um, and... Oh my God, I'm spacing. Sorry. Doing this on the fly, it was one of those things Monday, they were looking for somebody and I said, I'll do it. I actually deleted this three times and then Mindy sent the email and I'm like, oh great, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something that has carried on with me throughout my life. I've enjoyed it. Um, great things is like little nerdy things that end up relating to real life. Like for instance, love Superman. Actually no, don't love Superman. Love his villains, but they're Superman. Um, in the early 1960s live action show, I don't know if you guys remember this really bad wiring, fuzzy background. Um, the writers actually came up with an actual chemical formula for kryptonite to bring realism to the show, because that's what a show about a flying dude needs is realism. Um, but <laughs> about nine years ago, they discovered an actual mineral that has the same chemical sentence. They could have named it kryptonite. They didn't. They named it geronite. I'm just going to let that slip. By you know, nine years ago, um, but six years ago, I actually started going to therapy because I was in college and things were getting really stressful, and I just didn't know. So I knew something was up because nobody should be in the place that I was at the time that I was. And five years ago, the therapist came out and said, "You have anxiety." And I'm picking up on things that might even be social anxiety. I got the bonus pack. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was like, okay. So even though I understood that I'm supposed to be stressed about paying my bills, going to school, finishing classes, and going to work and everything like that, it turns out you're not supposed to feel like you're having a heart attack all the time. <laughs> And it, don't laugh, that's exactly what an anxiety attack feels like. It feels mm -hmm. like a heart attack. And I thought I was going to be that special patient on an episode of House. It was terrible. And so he started going over this long list of prescriptions for me to try out. And I was not cool with it at all. Because, one, it's a red flag when the list of prescriptions has an equal to greater list of side effects. And I'm not okay with that. 
Um, some of these prescriptions were as only take with water, don't take with caffeinated beverages, uh, start a diet that does not have caffeinated beverages, don't take with juice, don't take with orange juice, you know, don't breathe air when you take this. <laughs> and I was not okay with that. I was not okay with doing stuff like that. And then he goes, well, you're a college kid. I know exactly what you want. And he started talking about prescribing me a green card. For those of you who don't know, a green card is what you get when they prescribe you medical marijuana. He says I was having an anxiety attack. I said I was having a perfectly normal reaction when I told him the state of Arizona can still fire you even if you have one of those for testing positive. I was not ready to lose my job at this point in time. I loved my job. I was working at GameStop. I was a manager. I got, I got paid to talk about video games. No way in heck am I losing my job because of this. And at this point, he's getting frustrated. He brings my parents in on this, because at this time, I'm still living at home. And my stepdad wants to know why, why. And I'm, take this, you can take this to the bank at any point in time, because it's just as relevant 50 years from now as it was five years ago. It is one thing to read a list of side effects. It is another thing to watch a family member experience them. My aunt is nuttier than a planter's factory. So I've seen these, and I'm like, I just don't feel comfortable with it. I find, I'll find another way. Doctor says, okay, but you know, nothing's gonna work for you, and most people who don't address this at an earlier time will go into depression, and most of them even go into suicidal thoughts, and most even succeed. And I looked at him, and I said, okay, I'll CC you on the suicide note, because I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay with putting that stuff in me. Six months down the line, I'm looking at things, most of them are how to cope with dealing with these medications, and I'm watching Comedy Central, because I love Comedy Central. And I'm home by myself, because my siblings are at high school, my parents are at home, and I have no classes for today, and I'm sitting on the couch, I'm upside down, with my feet up where your head's supposed to be, just kind of looking. And it's Christopher Tice, and he said two things, because he's, he's talking about how he's had to deal with mental illness in his family and his hard life. Two things he said to me, and these still stick with me to today. The first one being, I am not a failure. I just succeed at finding out what doesn't work. And the second being, of everybody that is that should be on these pills, I am one of them, but I choose to be an antidepressant. I choose to be this way. And that stuck with me. And I loved it. And so from that day forward, I tried to take every day with a giant dose of comedy. If I can make you smile, that's good. Because that means your day isn't that bad. If I can make you laugh, that's great. Because I brought joy into your life. So I will always try to do that while I'm up here. I will always try to do that when you see me at my desk. So, and there was a moral to this speech. But unfortunately, because of the dyslexia, all I have are these marbles. <laughs> 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 Thank you guys.